Hello world, this is Random Fix. In this video today, we're going to be doing the front brakes on this 2016 fourth generation Prius. And I'm going to show you what tools you're going to need so you can get this done in a matter of minutes versus trying to spend hours. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this with some helpful tips along the way. And for staying tuned till the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys some nice free gifts. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we got the Toyota Prius here and we are doing the front brakes and I've had the brakes for quite a while and now we are finally at 117,808 miles and the brakes are due for a change because we're going to go on a cross country adventure in the Prius here. So the brakes are there. I normally go ahead and do a tire rotation, oil change, everything at once. So I'm going to have a video link down below on how to do the tire rotation and everything else below. And for this video, I'm gonna tell you guys what you're gonna to need to go ahead and get this done. So the very first thing you wanna do is get yourself some sort of brake spreader. So I have a Lang right here that can work. You could also grab one of these cheapy ones. They're about $5. I have some brake cleaner here. Two cans always helps. I have a 21 millimeter impact here. This is what I use to go ahead and remove the tire from the car. I always try to go ahead and make sure it's loose before I go ahead and jack it up. And for jacking the car up, I go ahead and use this jack right here. It's a floor jack. And I got a little rubber piece here to make sure I don't damage anything. And when I have it up on the jack, I like to go ahead and use these horses. And my car is going to be completely off the ground but if you're only going to care about the two front wheels that's all you're going to do you can leave it on the jack i don't recommend it it's not safe and that's your decision and i have two blocks here in case i need to block the wheels off so you could also use wood and for my car i'm actually changing out the rotors so i have these nice caliper hangers right here and you could also use a, a coat hanger if you have one available so that way the line doesn't have any kind of stress on there. You're going to need a 14 millimeter to go ahead and remove the caliper bolt. Then I have a torque wrench here. So after we put the tires on, we can go ahead and torque it down to 76 pounds of torque. And we can go ahead and get that on nice and secure. And I always recommend checking the torque setting after driving for 10 or 20 miles. Because I've seen vehicles at where the lug actually backs off and it's not a fun experience. The wheel will actually fall off. And then I have a 17 right here in case the bolt by the caliper actually moving. You're going to use that. I have a flat tip screwdriver in case we need to pry anything loose. I also have a 14 millimeter here to go ahead and use on a smaller ratchet because sometimes this is a little bit easier. I have a smaller torque wrench here for putting the caliper bolt back in. You can use some Loctite and to grease up the pin for the caliper, you can go ahead and use something like this 3M paste here, or you can use this caliper lube right here. And if you live in a very bad area and you got snow and salt on the road, you might want to use some anti-seize. And on this particular vehicle, in case you're experiencing some kind of disc noise, they have this disc brake quiet right here and it works because one thing about the toyota prius fourth generation here if you're ever driving and you hear that little click 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 there's actually bad hardware that comes on this vehicle so i actually removed these brake pads originally at seventy thousand because i got so sick and tired of that noise and i'm going to go ahead and put this up on the horses jack this all up and again you'll find a link to a video on how to go ahead and lift up the vehicle if you're not sure how to do that safely and lastly, I have my brake pads and two brand new rotors right here. And I have my oil pan right here that I use for changing the oil. And what happens is the brake cleaner is going to fall on the ground. And you don't want to go ahead and dirty up your whole garage just because of that. So I always recommend catching all your contaminated fluids into one bucket. And that way you can go ahead and get it to this right facility to go ahead and possibly recycle them. All right, guys. So we got an official seal of approval that I know what I'm doing. I actually worked at a shop and been working on cars since I was 13 years old. And I'm not going to leave you guys hanging here. So we got everything we need to get going. And now let's get this Prius up in the air. Okay, so we have the car up in the air. You don't have to go ahead and disconnect the 12-volt battery that's 
under the hood on this vehicle and if you had an older Prius it would be in the trunk area but you want to make sure you do certain things one of the things is keep your keys far away from the vehicle second thing is do not touch that brake until you have the caliper and the whole assembly back on if not you're going to go ahead and just push the piston out and the other thing you also want to go ahead and observe is mine has a part a rear parking brake the one where you push in but if you had one of those electronic ones you're going to need a special scan tool so this video right here is only for the front brakes but i will show you at 117,000 miles how much of the rear brake is actually left and on this one you do not need a special scan tool because it doesn't have that actuator where the parking brake is always set whenever you park it you have to manually do it all right so we got all the tires in the right place now and now let's go look at those rear brakes to see how worn out they are put the tire down easy buddy don't let it drop <laughs> so let's go ahead and test out how much of the brake pads are actually left after 117,000 miles here so on the front brakes here it looks like we got five millimeter left which is surprising because I thought these brakes would be toast and on the rear brakes here it also looks like we have five millimeters left which is also surprising because normally the fronts will wear out a lot faster than the rear so this is holding up pretty well we're still gonna change them though so one of the things that I do besides leaving the door open is I go ahead and pop the hood that way I have clear access to that brake fluid reservoir because later on we're going to go ahead and take the cap off once we're ready to go ahead and compress the piston back. Okay, so I did the passenger side already and here on the driver's side you want to go ahead and turn your wheel to the left so you'll have easier access to everything. So these are going to be the caliper bolts. These are the 14s. You're going to go ahead and remove them and if you're going to change the rotor you're going to remove this one right here it's 17 and also 17 right down here and I forgot to tell you guys you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket to get the caliper bolt off down here and up here for the bracket and then you need a wire brush to go ahead and clean the actual caliper grooves and let's go ahead and begin off with removing these 14 and these two are going to be the same so don't worry about it we're going to grab our bracket hanger here pull this off just like that and now we're going to go ahead and hang the caliper so it's out of our way and there is no stress on this brake line right here Or you might have to use a breaker bar like this. With these 17 millimeter bolts loose, I can go ahead and back both of them up. And these two bolts are the same exact thing, so don't worry about that. And the one thing I want to point out to you guys, this pin and this pin are not identical. So I'll show you guys that now. So if you guys notice, this pin right here on the bottom has this rubber seal. The top one does not. And when you're putting the brake pads back in pay attention to the upper part of this brake pad as the upper part of this brake pad on both sides is going to get the hardware so hardware is going to go up here and hardware is going to be on on the upper side on both keep that in mind and the one other thing i want to cover with you guys is you see guys see these shims right here these came from Toyota originally and I actually think that this is a bad design so you got one shim then you got another shim and these are the little 
clicking noise that I told you about in the very beginning of the video. So when I do put my new brake pads on, I'm not going to go ahead and reinstall these. Honestly, I will keep you guys up to date and I'll drive about a thousand miles and I'll, before I post this video. And you guys can check any updates in the comments below if anything changed. But I'm going to go ahead and leave these shims off as I think these are going to be more of a problem than a benefit. But make sure you do guys put on the top hardware here. Now go ahead and remove the bracket. Completely. And we're going to go and re-grease the pins here. Clean this all up. Put the new hardware in that comes in your brake pad kit. And then we'll go ahead and remove the rotor. And the rotor should just come off. And if it doesn't, go ahead and give it a nice couple of hits with the hammer as it might be frozen to the actual hub. So you want to make sure you put some anti-seize on the back once you put it back. There it goes. Brake rotor is off. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my wire brush and brush the front of that hub off right there so we get a nice clean surface. Now I'm going to grab my brake cleaner and clean the front of this off. And you guys see that red gunk on the back of the piston? You want to make sure you remove all that as well before you go ahead and reinstall this. Now I'm going to go ahead and compress the piston back. So I'm going to grab one of these $5 tools. So I've gone ahead and slid in one of my old brake pads right here. There's the piston. And I haven't compressed this yet because one thing I want to do is I want to come up here. There's these two tabs. And you want to loosen up the cap on the brake fluid reservoir. Don't leave it off. You just want to put it on top because we really don't want unnecessary water and moisture to go in there but this is not tight and now we're going to go ahead and compress that piston that piston is going to go back straight and you could use a c-clamp you could use one of those spreaders that i showed you in the very beginning and i'll have a link to anything that i use in the video and i'll also include a link to other videos that can help you out in case you don't have one of these tools here, I have a cheat on that too. All right, so this is nice and flush now. I'm gonna go ahead and back this out now. And there's my piston, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. And do not be cheap with your brake. Cleaner. I normally get one can per side so in this job I'm going to go ahead and use about two cans. Let that drip dry which will take only a few seconds since it's alcohol based. And if you guys ever want to get a good deal on these they sell these for about $1.99 at O'Reilly's or AutoZone when they have sales so stock up then. And you can use them for a lot of other jobs as well. Now what I like to do is actually clean up the bracket here. So you want to go ahead and remove the pins here completely. And these rubber seals come out as well. So just go ahead and pull on them very gently. And they come out and they slide right back on in. You can do the same for this side. But make sure you put the right pin on the right side. So where it says L down here. This is where the one with the little rubber boot is going to slide on to. And the one that has a part number is not going to have that little seal up top. Now I'm going to go take this back to the bin. And I spray a little bit of brake cleaner in here. And I clean this up. And then I'm going to go and take a towel with a screwdriver and clean out the actual hole here. So I don't have the old residue sitting around before I go ahead and add in my silicone paste. So grab yourself a rag and clean the caliper guide bolt here 
And once we clean it up, we're going to go ahead and install it back in here. But before you do that, you're going to grab that silicone paste and you're going to lightly brush it on. Don't go too heavy on this. So you want this to have enough lube and move it around with your hand. Give it some twists to get it nice and evenly spread out on there. You want to do the same exact thing for the other pin. And to put in the hardware, just go ahead and slide it into place and push down. And in case you get confused, you can look down at your piece and you'll see the little indentation where the hardware is supposed to go in. And it just slides in just like that. So we got the hardware in place. We got the pins lubed. There's no tears in the boots. And, and you want to get everything nice and juicy. So that's good. And lastly, we're going to grab our brake pads and actually put on that piece of hardware that comes in the box. So if you can imagine, this is the way that the brake caliper is going to go in. And this brake pad is going to go in like that. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the top side right here. And this brake pad is going to come over from the other side. And we're going to go and attach... One of the things that I like to do is actually put a little grease on the back of the brake pads. And as I told you guys, I was going to remove those shims because of the rattling noise that it created. So make sure you grease up everything properly. And if it helps, in the container it has a little guide. The back of each pad, these little pins right here where the pads are going to slide into where my pinky is. And... I'll show you guys that as I do that. So let's go ahead and remove the back of this as well. So this is good to go. Now let's go ahead and grab the rotor here and clean up the rotor before we do the rest of the mounting. So I like to go ahead and grab some kind of clean surface to clean up the back of the rotor here and we're going to let that dry for a second once it's dry i'm going to go ahead and put some anti-seize here while the brake rotor is drying on the back side i'm going to go ahead and put some anti-seize on the back of this hub and you want to make sure that you move the actual brake rotor forward so this does not drip on there because you're going to have to clean it up again so anti-seize is highly recommended now I got myself a virgin pad that's clean I'm going to clean this up one more time and use my clean rag here to wipe the back of that rotor and I'm going to grab the rotor from the inside Put it onto the hub here and if it helps keep it in place grab on your lug nuts and secure the brake rotor so it doesn't move around as it will make your install a little bit easier now I'm going to grab my brake cleaner again Wipe that down again. Use a different portion of my rag. Wipe down. Clean up that little bottom area. And we can go ahead and start getting the bracket in place and putting the whole assembly back together. For the bracket bolts, I'm going to go ahead, put a little bit of this Loctite on here. Grab my bracket here. Feed the two 17 millimeter bolts through the back here. And on the screen, you guys are going to see the torque setting for the bracket bolts here.
Now I'm going to grab my silicone paste. I'm going to put a little tiny bit here, here, and on the back of the pad. And you want to make sure you don't touch the front of it. And all you do is you put the back section in, then you kind of twist it. into place and push it in. Then you're gonna do the same thing for the pad that goes on the back. And everything should be nice and compressed. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the actual caliper back on. Want to push the little bushings in. Grab your actual caliper bolts. Put some Loctite on these. Now you're going to need a 17 millimeter to go ahead and hold that while you turn this now you want to grab yourself a 17 millimeter slim open-ended wrench as you turn the 14 millimeter bolt up here because it'll walk on you if you don't have this and if you don't have a slim one available, you can use a grinding wheel to go ahead and shave down an older one that you have. And with both the driver and the passenger side brakes done, I'm going to go inside the car now and push the brake pedal nice and smooth. A couple of times here. And so this is only when the calipers are completely assembled. As doing this when they're not will cause the piston to just pop out of the actual caliper and that's going to be a bad day you're going to have to run down to the shop and you're going to have to then bleed the brake system which on this toyota prius there's actually a scan tool that does abs bleeding my brake fluid looks really good i have a tester so i've tested it and i'm happy with it but if you guys want to see that video please comment down below and i'll be more than happy to do that for you guys just make sure that you guys put the cap back on the brake fluid reservoir nice and tight and get these clips back in push the seal down and if you guys were curious this is how much we have left on the front brake pads here so there's quite a bit I'm sure you might be able to even go up to 200,000 miles without changing out the brake pad and when I think I'm done and I have everything assembled I'll go ahead and spray any area that might have got contaminated one last time on both sides and while the oil is draining, I'm going to go ahead and put the tire back on. And if you guys see that groove right there on the lug nut, make sure you guys get the center. Because if it's sitting on the edge of the rim, it won't go in correctly and you're going to have issues. So start everything by hand. Put it on the low torque setting. And then work it in a crisscross pattern. And then once you actually make contact with the ground, you can go ahead and use a torque wrench. With all four tires back on the ground, go ahead and torque everything down. Set the parking brake as it really helps. 
And now we're going to go take this for a quick little test drive. When we get back, we're going to just double check again with the torque wrench and then check 20 miles down the road as well. Let's go ahead and reset the oil maintenance on this as well. So the reset is done now. Let's go take this for a quick little drive. So the vehicle is driving good and I no longer hear that little tick 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 noise that I was getting before so this is actually great. And the brakes are nice and strong. And if you guys want to download the random fixed tire rotation guide here and also the doorman wheel torque guide here you'll find these both at randomfixworld.com and they're free downloads so check them out and there's also some other pretty cool stuff there like a car buying guide and other things that you guys will find useful if you guys are enjoying the video give the video a dirty thumbs up because it's nice to be able to save yourself some money